Well, what can I say? Um, I had people calling you Commander in Chief. I had people calling you an African. But I think I'll call you a true son of Africa. Because when you talk about Pan Africanism, we were screwed by the Europeans. <laughs> Yesterday I said that 1884 Berlin Conference. I think it was, they should have just left us. Because truth be told, we are uncouth and we are, we are uncivilized. Yeah. Because we let our own greed dictate the future. Uh, when my brother, Fio Lowe, told me that you're here. In fact, today I was supposed to come. I saw the invitation quite late. I said, you know what, I must come. And I must come here because I've had you speak and you speak your mind. And you influence so many of us. And some of us speak our mind. And we don't give a hoot in hell of who is there, what they think of us. We say what is in our heart. But truth be told, we inspired <coughs> by those leaders who came before us, who were there in other countries, so that we can be able to make a difference in this world. I come from the people who have been terrorized, stigmatized, extremely dangerous for many years, you know, even until today. These guys here in their government, they are still terrorizing us. <laughs> and if you ask them why, they'll tell you because last time when you were in, the, in power, you terrorized us. <laughs> you know, indigenous people, are seen as strangers in their own land, you know? And sometimes when you go at it head on, you end up suffering. But we must tell them, just like we normally say, the majority will always have their way, but the minority will have their say. The Maasai people who I come from, who I'm, I'm a proud son of. And uh, my story is very interesting, because my grandfather migrated from the Tanzania was carried by the mother. I don't know who my great grandfather is. You know, and I think that is what makes me a bit different. <clears throat> because I was brought, my grandfather was brought into this country, finally migrated to Narok, where he was adopted there, and he became a local Maasai from Narok. The Maasai, for most of you don't know, we are divided among clans, and I think that is the biggest problem you know, that is destroying our independence and our civility. I come from a very small clan, but God has given me faith. My clan, we are only 4,000, 4,000. You know, but I'm leading 1.5 million people who, the other clan, who have got about 400,000 votes elected me because they saw wisdom. And uh, when, I, when I watch you, you know, there are only two people that I spend my time watching from the African, actually three from the African continent. One of them was my friend, the late Jerry Rollins, because I knew him very well. Number two is this, I still call him a young man because he's young at heart. He's completely unorthodox sometimes, but a fine gentleman. I tra I've traveled with PLO for a long time. When I went with him, with Don, to Ghana, when we entered in, in fact, they even almost forgot to stamp our passports <laughs> because of how much we were singing praise of him being a Pan African. You know, and the third person, apart from Mandela, is of course during this period of time, is you. Because you speak your heart, you say what ails us. You know, I, I went to South Africa to buy my car. And uh, in fact, I brought it here. And I drove from South Africa all the way to Nairobi. And when I was there, I spent my time to listen, to understand the culture. You see, we have a big problem in South Africa. We have a very big problem. We have a big problem in Kenya here today because every regime that comes in power, they think about just how to line their pockets. You know, they care. They don't care about future generations. They don't. Julius, they don't give a hoot in hell. I'll tell you that. They only care about, like Don here, 
he probably would care, and I'm just using Don as an example. <laughs> <laughs> he, would, he would care about uh, his, is it how much is it now? Two, 20 million cars? And maybe who live up in the Bolivar, like in his neighborhood, because they speak the same language, they're elitist. But the truth be told, this Western people, the only reason why we cannot defeat them is because they have colonized our brains. What is happening today in this country, and I'll be very honest, is the same thing that is happening in South Africa. Why should we be having load shedding in South Africa when you have plenty of sun? I mean, ask yourself very simple questions. 